plagues continue to ramp up as Pharaoh continues rejecting God's demands. But all these judgments upon Egypt are building to the final devastating blow on The Bible Brief. Rejecting God is dangerous business. Assuming that God can flippantly be rejected time and time again with no consequence is a fatal error. And here's why. Sometimes in response to rejection, God will ensure further rejection for his own purposes. God is not obligated to give anyone infinite opportunities for obedience to his commands. And sometimes, he will use someone's very disobedience to accomplish a good purpose of his. This is what's going to happen to Pharaoh. First, he hardened his own heart to God's commands. But now, God will harden Pharaoh's own heart for a global purpose. God will use Pharaoh's hard heart to multiply the plagues further so that God's name and fame spreads throughout the world. We've already seen four of God's wonders. First, it was water turned to blood, then frogs, then gnats, and finally we saw the flies. But Pharaoh remains hardened as the fifth plague is imminent. Let's start reading in Exodus chapter 9. The Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, Behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. And the next day, the Lord did this thing. All types of livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. But the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. This death of livestock in the field was severe indeed. These animals were the livelihood of the Egyptians and each family's primary store of wealth. Yet in a single day, many livestock died. This day would have effects that would last generations. Immediately there would be less food on the table and less labor for farming endeavors, and eventually, there would be less to inherit for the next generation. All because of this plague on the animals in the field. But with Pharaoh's hardened heart, this plague won't be the last. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from the kiln, and let Moses throw them in the air in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become fine dust all over the land of Egypt, and become boils breaking out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. So they took soot from the kiln and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it in the air, and it became boils breaking out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils came upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Imagine everyone you spoke to today suddenly having boils and sores all over their bodies, with all the odor and ooziness to match. These boils were also apparently painful enough that the magicians of Pharaoh couldn't even stand before Moses due to them. Now Pharaoh had likely thought that losing the Israelite slaves would decrease the productive capabilities of his empire, but he certainly didn't account for the productive losses of these plagues, especially the painful boils that slowed life down to a crawl in Egypt. Note here also that at the end of Plague 6, we see the first language explicitly telling us that God himself hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Previously, we'd seen neutral language or language telling us that Pharaoh had hardened his own heart. But here after Plague 6, it's clearly God who is doing the hardening. But why? Why would God harden Pharaoh's heart? Why is he seemingly working against his purpose to free Israel from slavery? Well, simply because he has another purpose, too. Let's keep reading in chapter 9, verse 15. God says this to Pharaoh through Moses, 
he says. For by now, I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth and died. But for this purpose I have raised you up, to show you my power, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. Briefly here, God expresses a motive greater than merely freeing Israel from their slavery in Egypt. God is using these plagues, these signs and wonders, to make his name famous throughout the earth. People far and wide will hear what happened to Egypt, and they will hear that it was Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, who decimated Egypt by his great power. And this fact drives some future happening in the Bible story. So tuck this away in your mind. The world hears about these plagues. After this brief explanation of the purpose of the continued plagues, they continue as plague seven comes upon the nation. God says this to Pharaoh through Moses. You are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. Behold, about this time tomorrow, I will cause very heavy hail to fall, such as never been seen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now therefore, send and get your livestock and all that you have in the field into safe shelter. For every man and beast that is in the field and is not brought home will die when the hail falls on them. Then whoever feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and his livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left his slaves and his livestock in the field. Notice here that before this awful hailstorm strikes, that God actually gives a warning and allows even some Egyptians to escape the plague if they will remove their livestock from the fields. And some who, quote, feared the word of Yahweh, paid attention to what he said and acted accordingly. And then the hail strikes. Try to picture this in your mind. It says, There was hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hail. Very heavy hail. Such had never been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the field in all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And the hail struck down every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, was there no hail. God again gives exception to the Israelites from this plague, a hailstorm unlike any other, because it was hail with fire. What a sight that must have been, almost like a meteor shower with thuds all around as each hailstone struck the ground. Herds were decimated, people out in the fields were slain, and the crops in season were all destroyed. The hail was bringing a society to its knees. It's after this plague that Pharaoh finally says, This time I have sinned, Yahweh is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Pharaoh then proceeds to ask Moses for intervention on his behalf. The hail has apparently made him desperate. And so Moses prays to God for the hail to cease. Yet next we read, But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet again and hardened his heart, he and his servants. So the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people of Israel go, just as the Lord had spoken through Moses. It seems that Pharaoh's repentance was merely lip service. Yahweh is not pleased. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country, and they shall cover the face of the land, so that no one can see the land. And they shall eat what is left to you after the hail, and they shall eat every tree of yours that grows in the field." And they shall fill your houses and the houses of all your servants and of all the Egyptians, as neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen, from the day that they came on the earth to this day. Then Moses turned and went out from Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the men go that they may serve Yahweh their God. Do you not yet understand that Egypt is ruined? You can hear the desperation among Pharaoh's servants here saying what perhaps many of them had been thinking for a while. Pharaoh, why haven't you freed Israel yet? Use your eyes. Can't you see that Egypt is destroyed? And yet the next day, the locusts came, devouring crops and trees. 
the number of locusts, was such that the sky actually darkened because of the thickness of their swarms. And they ate their way through the land until not a single green plant remained. After this plague, Pharaoh again pleads with Moses for respite, which is again granted. Yet here again we see that Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go. This brings us to plague number nine. A plague of a different character than all the ones before. This time, it won't be animals or disease or hail. Plague nine will involve light itself. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. Darkness was over the face of Egypt, all except for the land of Goshen where Israel lived. This darkness was a darkness that crept into the bones it was so dark. Absolute pitch black. Like the universe before God had said, let there be light. It was almost as if Egypt itself was being uncreated by these plagues. Its crops were destroyed, its livestock was decimated, its people were dejected, and darkness had overtaken them. Pharaoh again pleads with Moses. Moses again prays to God, and the Lord again hardens Pharaoh's heart. Nine plagues have set the stage for perhaps the main event. Plague 10 the final judgment upon the oppressive nation, the last push that Pharaoh would need to finally let Israel go. But oddly enough, it's a plague that wouldn't automatically exempt the Israelites. God will use this final plague to unite a nation, to show his power to save, to show the severity of his judgment upon the oppressors. The devastation upon Egypt will be severe but it will serve as the backdrop to one of the greatest pictures of salvation in the whole Bible, a salvation from death through the blood of an innocent. Join us next time as death visits every house in Egypt, a death that can only be stopped by blood, death for death. The Bible Brief is brought to you by the Bible Literacy Foundation, dedicated to helping people like you learn the Bible.